it's Elle here to do a collective reading for the air signs. It, it will be time stamped. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone for uh, continuing to come back. Uh, happy holidays if you celebrate. Um, it's a general message. It will not resonate with every air sign. If it resonates with you, go over to the website. Book your own reading there. Take advantage of the coupon codes below. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. All right, so let's get into this. We're going to start with Gemini. Okay, we're going to go Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. All right, so Gemini. What do you have to tell Gemini right now? Today is the 12th. 12, 12, 12, okay? That portal of karmic energy being, for the last 10 years, being uh, uh, rectified, being cleared. What do you have to tell Gemini? Okay. What do you have to tell Gemini? General message. Okay. Okay, and this one they come out. All right, bottom of the deck, the page of cups. Okay, so increased spirituality, increased awareness. Maybe there's someone new that has entered, entered your life or you entering someone else's. Let's see. Ten of Pentacles, very nice. Seven of Swords, Page of Seven of Swords, Queen of Cups, Ten of Wands. So Gemini, this looks like someone may hold a secret for you in regards to a relationship, um, a marriage or a business contract. How they're coming off is deceptive in nature. Deceptive in, in, in regards to how they feel. Trying to remain emotionally stable in regards to this person, place, or thing, but definitely holding on to something Ten of Wands here, uh, that someone is holding, okay, as I flip the deck, we got the Emperor here. This could be you. This could be another person. Someone is trying to remain structured, balanced in regards to how they feel about another. In regards to, some of you are married. You want to tell someone exactly how you feel about the marriage that maybe there's someone else here uh, or, or vice versa. Someone wants to tell you that within a marriage or a relationship or a contract or a business. There's also an element of Gemini wanting to go to someone and express exactly how they feel. Uh, express that they, they see longevity in a relationship. It could be with anybody. All signs are here except for... Uh, all signs are here. Am I looking at this wrong? Yeah. Um, this really could be that um, someone's trying to get away. Someone's not expressing to you how they feel, Gemini. Someone is just carrying the load. It looks like it may get to a place of someone wanting to, to stop carrying that load and they want to give you a heartfelt message, either you or they. There's deception here, but deception in regards to exactly how somebody feels their emotions. This could be you, this could be someone else, someone that you have a child with, someone you want to have children with, someone who you see longevity with. Someone, this could be also a marriage that goes from the Ten of Pentacles to the Ten of Wands, where now it's just taxing, it is drama filled, it is burdensome, it is no longer fun, it is no longer fulfilling. This is, um, a, 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 a this is, um, Carrying the heavy load instead of releasing. This is someone who's holding on to something also. Maybe even a secret. Gemini, right now, this is the energy of how someone feels about you or vice versa. This could be a masculine energy. There could be some Gemini man who wants to go to some woman and express exactly how they feel and release the burden of not being able to, to speak, to effectively and clearly speak. To, to, it's like they are the fraud. They're defrauding themselves and they are a fraud in regards to emotions and 
uh, how they're coming off to another. Someone could have walked away from a relationship, marriage or whatever, business partnership because it was too drama filled. The love affair was, it was dramatic. Um, people pay, played childish games. There was too much of a childlike spirit here. There was a, a lack of maturity. What well, there is. For my Gemini women, there might be more than one person that they're taking up with. You may have a main and somebody else. You feel like you want to release this relationship, this marriage. Gemini women, you're doing a lot in regards to your marriage or your commitment or your relationship. You've taken the brunt of, um, of all of the work, the doing in regards to how to keep the relationship going, how to make everything work within the household. If there are children, you're taking on all of that. While another person takes it easy, you're holding on to how you feel about this. You need to release it or you're going to break down. You could even be experiencing some stress-related health concerns because you're taking on so much. Some of my Gemini men who are, are directly connected to Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, you may be sneaking out on the relationship. You feel differently about the relationship. You continuously sneak out on the relationship. You may have other whatever. Um, and in, 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 in turn, in some measure of loyalty in regards to the established relationship that you have, you just, you just carry the burden of the relationship because you get to do what you want to do, seven of swords, um, here and there. You get to be deceptive. You get to have relationship outside of the commitment. There's another aspect. Gemini, some of my Gemini women, you're dealing with someone who is taking the brunt of the relationship and they're not exactly speaking how they feel about this. And there might be them wanting to go towards someone else or something else. They may be getting fulfillment with someone or something else. Spirit may be speaking to them in regards to there's something better here for them. Gemini, let's get you an angel answers card. you believe okay if you believe that this can turn around that you can get out of that you can come out of only if you believe it starts with you maybe spirit speaking to you you're doing a lot of work here okay if you believe you can have this person some of you want to go back to a person or someone wants to come back to you Okay, Gemini, I hope that you have a really good holiday. Uh, we're going to go on to Libra. All right. Let's jump into Libra. Right. I'll pick this one up. So let's go there. Okay, Libra. Libra, you're having some really good energy lately. I think some of you just really in hermit mode, just really trying to recoup some of the energy that you have spent on in a particular endeavor or on a particular person. Some of you are recouping from uh, health-related issues, some health scare also. Um, some of you are helping someone else recoup. Somebody, you, you thought somebody was going to pass. I don't think they have just yet. If someone was waiting for you to pass, 
That's very specific. All right, Libra. What do you want to tell Libra? Okay, coming right out. What should Libra know? Okay, four cards here. All right, seven of pentacles. So definitely you're at a standstill in regards to getting some good news, some good money coming in, baby news, just good news all together. You have done the work. You put the work in. And now you're waiting for that return on your investment. Um, some of you are pruning right now. Also, if it doesn't yield you an investment, you're cutting it out, cutting, cutting it away. It could be a business, a relationship, a marriage, whatever it may be. Some of you, like I say, you're waiting for somebody to die. Some of you are, and that's harsh, or somebody was waiting for you to, to pass or something to pass. Uh, the Princess of Cups, the Two of Swords. The Eight of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups. This is like caregiver. Someone, someone is or was a caregiver in some dynamic. They put a lot of work, energy, effort, time into this. They even had other people helping them in regards to you, Libra. Uh, you know, helping you either get better or, or hospice or something of that sort. Someone's waiting for you to die waiting for you to be deceased or or vice versa you're doing that waiting for something to die waiting for and it can also be a rebirth in regards to a spiritual rebirth waiting for the opportunity to move in a certain direction waiting to merge yourself with um either a loved one or a business opportunity or job that will bring you a lot of stability so maybe some investment or some large money or a 401k, something where you have kept your head down that you have put into, that you have just continued to pour into. And now you may even be reaping that reward or um, continuously merging yourself with it. There, it. It's growing. It's cyclical. You put in, it grows. You put in, you grow. It grows. It could be investments. It could be real estate. It could be a 401k. It could be um yeah you and you putting money into um stocks and bonds anything a cd something that is growing here um something that's going to yield you a large sum here uh to your to, to a source this is sun and lever so you're of two minds about something or someone um this could definitely be you waiting for you're waiting for the opportunity or waiting for a message also. This could, you, this could be a message coming into you that takes you to a place of indecision and being uh, indecisive about do you want to merge with this? You want to put energy, effort, time, money behind it. Um, it says make an, an intuitive decision about this. Some of you, it's about your health and well-being and getting better. Some of you, it's about a relationship. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, another air sign. Someone that maybe you have children with or you, you spent a significant amount of time with or there was an emotional, there's an emotional uh, bond here. Some of you, you're doing some energy work where you help people get over, get through. They come to you, um, you give really good advice. You know how not to take on the energy of the, the quarant or the person inquiring about. Uh, some of you are about two, you're, you're about two minds about this. Again, something about Some energy makes you unstable. Get get under your spiritual practice, whatever you do, Libra, to get back to a place of being stable. You're trying to maintain emotional stability, but it may be that something or someone else is bringing you to a place of, of being erratic emotionally, maybe even emotional outburst. Uh, it could be at work. It could be with a child. Some of you are about two minds about 
putting in the work with a child, your child, a grandchild. You're wondering if this is going to pay off. You're wondering if you can keep this up, whatever it may be. Um, you're being very nurturing. Libra, this is interesting. Let's see what this is about. Let's get a butterfly or a card. Let's see what you should be concerned with moving forward. Karmic energy being um, done away with. New karmic cycle here for all of us. Okay, let's see. It could be self-employment. Like I said, you may help people in some capacity, but some energy is taking you to mentally, mental depletion, or or you you have two minds. Do I even want to jump back into this? Um, it's a lot of work. You've worked a lot. So, some of you, your health is at a is, is in a way of you doing even more work. You're trying to get back to a better health state. Some of you. Um, you're, you're thinking about self-employment. What can you do? What can you do to bring about passive income? Do you help finances? Some of you are definitely thinking about finances. Libra, it looks like a really interesting read for you. Some things to think about, contemplate, go over in your head. All right, so we're going to go to Aquarius now. All right, let's jump into this. All right, Aquarius, thank you for being here. Let's go ahead and get into this, Aquarius. What do you want to tell Aquarius? 12, 12. What do you want to tell Aquarius? Okay, let's cut the deck. All right. Okay, first card out, Aquarius. the deck we have rebirth or judgment okay so Aquarius it says that the past is over and it is releasing you it's relinquishing you live in the present in the here and the now make some lifestyle change or lifestyle change has already you're already involved in that live in the present make plans for today and the future come out of the past the past is over Nine of Swords, come out of the energy of, I'm not sure it's going to happen. I'm not sure how it's going to happen. Um, sleepless and restless nights. Maybe there might need to be a change to your diet. Something that's keeping you up at night. Uh, listen to your body when your body talks. Um, some, some mental energy of how is this going to play out? Is this over? Is it almost over? Strength card. Yep. This could definitely be in regards to your health. Uh, do know that you need to make the necessary changes. Stay strong and true. Have convictions about what you won't do and what you will do in regards to your health, wealth, and well-being. Um, know that your convictions will land you on the path that you want to be in. Also, this is about releasing harsh judgment and forgiveness. First, firstly, to you and then secondly, to, to others. Forgive yourself first. Uh, taming yourself also in regards to maybe addictions or addictive behavior or just bad decisions altogether. Let's see what this is about. The temperance card, uh, conservation, moderation, uh, patience, uh, the give and the take, the yin and the yang, the feminine and the masculine. 
knowing when to draw on what energy and why, knowing to be the alchemist here, that you play the role as the alchemist, that you can have cooperation in your life with other people, uh, with situations. Know that um, a healthy and a wealthy marriage is coming to you or in your social circle, okay? Marriage can be anything. It could be the, you know, marriage, a uh, man and a woman or a woman and woman, whatever. I'm not going to get into that. You guys know the dynamics of, um, or it could be marriage could be you, uh, committing and tying yourself to, uh, a job or a career or a new business, but there's some wealthy, um, marriage that is happening for you. There could also be something that comes from the past or something that comes from here and now maybe that you need to salvage or, or or come to an agreement with or try to rework or there is someone who wants to salvage a relationship situation business uh with you could be a sagittarius could be this is directly related to the king of cups it could be cancer pisces scorpio you got air sign here you got leo here We've got the Queen of Cups, okay? It looks like there's someone who wants to, uh, wants forgiveness from you, okay? They want a second chance. They they are staying up restless in their mind and in their heart thinking that this is over. They want forgiveness. Uh, they feel like they've been judged too harshly by you or others. They want to salvage what you guys have. They're willing to compromise and come together. They're very much in love with you and ready to do the work to show you that they're in love with you. Uh, they're emotionally stable right now. And the stability comes from the fact that they know that you still hold some reservation for them. They have not made any move or attempt to come toward you. But it looks like what the cards want you to know is that maybe the karmic cycle uh, energy has been uh, displaced expelled and now there's newness that can happen between the two of you if you're open to it let's get an angel answer card here definitely got somebody who wants forgiveness or or this is you aquarius you want forgiveness from the cancer pisces scorpio um you're trying to do all that you can do some of you are playing two positions whatever that may mean well, there's someone else playing two positions here. What do you have to tell Aquarius by way of the angel answers deck? What do you have to tell Aquarius? Wow, be assertive. Assert yourself. Assert your authority. Assert what it is you want out of a particular connection. Guess what, guys? It's up to you. All right. So, Aquarius, this looks really good. I think you had this for several readings someone wanting to return to you or you return to them somebody just wants forgiveness altogether um aquarius gemini libra thank you for being here just a quick reading for 12 12 i'm going to try to do more i am doing away with monthly readings i'm just going to do weeklies all right so thank you take care guys stay tuned for the next segment of this reading Really good segment. Um, give me your feedback on it. Also, comment below the next. Um, if, if there's something you want me to cover in the next um, segment, uh, it's called L's Real Corner. If, if there's a issue, question you want me to cover, comment below. Make sure you're comment, liking, subscribing to the channel. Please share. Thank you, guys. Take care. Happy holidays. Hi, it's Elle here with Elle's Real Corner. Today we are talking about uh, the question posed is why are you dating? Um, hence, I'm pretty sure everyone has heard the term dating uh, with intentions. Um, today we're going to talk about why are you dating? A lot of times when people come to me for personal readings and I gather the situation it's more so a situation of persons, said person did not go into the relationship, the friendship, whatever it may have been or is 
Um, they didn't go into it with set intentions, okay? Uh, they did not define what what their end game is or was. Um, so it led to frustration, headache, just drama, okay? So today we're going to talk about why are you dating? Pretty much dating is two different, it's only two choices. You're either dating for fun and friendship, you just, you know, it's um, not, not commitment, uh, you're just out to meet new people, just uh, gather as many friendships as you can possibly gather. And then also we have those who are pursuing long-term commitment. This is, they are in the, I guess you would say the market for, um, you know, a long-term commitment or at least cultivating that with another individual, okay? About 5% of you here, most, my demographic on this channel is mostly women. So I'm talking from, of course, I am a woman, a woman's perspective, and I'm talking to pretty much other women. So about 5% of you are going to be dating for fun and friendships. About 95% of you, you want, you are, you know, actively pursuing a long-term commitment. That's what you really want. And that's okay. Um, about 95% of you will go about pursuing long-term commitment by way of the measures of fun and friendships. So you won't really have a set intention, a uh, strategy in order to pursue or uh, at least get to long-term commitment. Um, so in about 5% of you will pursue long-term commitment, you know, with the measure of, um, you'll, you'll pursue long-term commitment and you'll, you'll have real set intentions, about 5% of you. So it, it's kind of the adverse for the two. But anyhow, when you are dating, you need to determine what you're doing. If it is pursuing long-term commitment, be truthful and honest about that, hence the Ace of Swords. You need to be clear, um, definite in what you're going after. And that's with the other party, that's with yourself too. Um, don't be afraid to voice what it is you're really after. To say to um, a new person, a new guy, if asked the question, what, what are you looking for? Because that's pretty much the question posed to a lot of people. You would say, well, I'm looking to, to be in, um, firstly, a, a situation, a friendship, or at least I'm looking to meet people who are open to long-term commitment. Of course, that won't happen right off the bat. But this is what I am after, long-term commitment, whether that looks like boyfriend and girlfriend or we're, we're you know, running off and getting married, if that's the case. But I'm, I would like to be dating someone who uh, is, is open to ex exclusive, exclusivity. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Um, yeah, I had to throw the pen on that one. Anyway, um that's what you would say <laughs> i can't get over it <laughs> okay so you want to date someone who is open to having an exclusive relationship okay it's you and them and not you them two other people maybe another person on the weekend i don't know you just want to you want to date people who are on the same wavelength as you in regards to dating okay um, and you voice that and you can't be afraid to voice that uh, because you're afraid of lo the person losing interest or you're afraid of losing this person or them not wanting, you know, them just, you're, you're afraid of loss or rejection and you can't be afraid of it. You have to look at that as the Ace of Swords. So what does the Ace of Swords tell, tell them? I can't talk worth shit today. What does the Ace of Swords tell? 
tell us. It tells us that we're going to be clear and definite in our communication, verbal and nonverbal. We understand that this will get us victory, what we're looking for, the outcome that we're desiring, but it is a challenge. So there, that's the, the Ace of Swords. The challenge is in being truthful, is in bearing your soul in, in regards to what it is you're really looking for. And the challenge may be that, okay, some people are with it, some people aren't. Take on the challenge. You got to look at it as it's a win-win. Whether this person continues to pursue you or they walk away from you, you won. Because the, the, in the walking away, that let you know that this person wasn't serious about pursuing anything with you. They didn't have real intentions. They respect the fact that you were open, honest enough, uh, truthful with yourself and them to say, I'm looking for... And, and, and you were able to voice that, so they walked away. Uh, and then you also have those who stay, which is good. So it's like you're weeding out. The Ace of Swords sometimes is that double-edged sword. You speak the truth, some shit's going to get cut out, off. Some people's going to get cut off, whatever. It's a win-win for you because in the end, you spoke your truth. You were the Ace of Swords in the beginning. And this is what we lack a lot of times in the beginning, we just jump into, right? And we just start the doing. We, we start, we want this, we want long-term commitment, but we go after it by way of fun and friendships. And yeah, I'll be your friend. And yeah, let's see where this goes. But you know that you want this. And that's not fair to yourself. It's not fair to the other person. You have to look at it as in the analogy of, you know, school, university, we all know here in the States, maybe abroad also, uh, when you when you enter university, it's about four years plus, depending on whatever you're pursuing, um, four years of um, instruction, um, of going to class. And then at the end of those four years, you will gain a degree, diploma, certification, whatever it is, whatever is termed for you. Um, you know that, right? That's your end game is degree, is certification. Um, you have to look at dating just that way. My intention is, my end game, my end goal is long-term commitment. So I'm not going to go after long-term commitment lackadaisical or, or uh, you know, just, okay, whatever happens and, and absent-minded and no intentions and not setting boundaries. I'm not gonna do that because it's not gonna get me where I wanna go. When you enter university, you know that you have to go to class. You know that you have to do the work. You know why you're doing it because you want the degree. You don't enter the university and you say, oh, well, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. Let's see where this goes. I'm open to the possibilities. Oh, I don't like titles and I, I don't know. You don't go into university. You don't spend that kind of money and not know what your intentions are and what your end game is. And you have to look at dating, especially when you are trying to pursue, um, when you are PLC, we'll, we'll use um, an abbreviation. When you are PLC, this is, you know, you go into it, sure, fire, okay? So, you stated your claim with this new person, okay? You need to ask, what are your intentions for dating? Now, you want to hear what the other person has to say. Now, you've reduced yourself from the Ace of Swords, or you've kind of, you, you've not reduced, you've, um, you've uh, gone up from the Ace of Swords to the Page of Swords. Now, you're inquisitive, you're curious, you're asking questions, you want to learn about what this person's intentions are in regards to dating. Not just you, because it's new and you guys have just met, but you wanna know what their intentions are in regards to dating. You wanna know if, they, if they're if they FF boys, could stand for anyway, or if they are a PLC, if they're pursuing long-term commitment, you wanna know. You're only gonna know that, you're only gonna know if they're FF or PLC if you ask the necessary questions, page of swords. 
You know, what are you looking for? Now, if you get answers like, uh, I don't know, let's see where this goes. Um, I'm open to possibilities or, you know, I don't like titles or you just get it all together. I don't know. Please be, be very, um, aware that 99% of the time, if you get answers like this, uh, this will, this is going to be a waste of your MF and time. It's really going to be a waste of your time. I mean, 99% of the time when you get answers like this, okay? Just revert back to the analogy of university. If you're in university and someone asks you, okay, so in four years after d the degree, where do you see yourself? What are you going to be doing? What if, if you are giving answers like this to questions like that, right? People will be like, you're not serious about your, your career. You're not serious about your education. You're not serious about university. So you have to say that in dealing with this person. And you cannot be afraid to cut them out. Or at least you put them in the FF category. If you want to have some fun, do know that's all that they're offering. Please know that's all that they're offering. It's fun and friendships. They will waste your MF in time, if you are a PLC girl, do know this motherfucker will waste your time for real. Uh, apologize for the, the obscenity, but I'm trying to drive the point home. All right. Okay. And as a side note, and, and this is going to be relative to the person listening, sex. Every I get the questions of sex sometimes. If you are a PLC girl, Wait as long as you see fit. Wait to have sex with this person for as long as you can hold out. Because you want to know them. You want to get to know them. You want to get to know their intentions. Yeah, you can have one conversation with them and they can tell you whatever the hell they want to tell you. To get you out of your underwear and into the bed. And then you end up 99%. This motherfucker is wasting your time, right? Right? So wait as long as you can. Wait as long as you see fit. There is no real um, time frame on that. Six months, three months, the 90-day rule. I mean, you can do that. You may even find resonance in that. You may find that it works for you. Granted, do whatever you see fit. But you want to wait as long as you possibly can. Why? Because back to... Um, Let's say back to university, right? Um, you're, you're going through university. Maybe you're in your second year of university. That's how you look. Maybe you're in your first year. You're a freshman in university. You're very good at um, some athletics uh, sport, track or basketball or whatever. And now we have um, National League pursuing you in your first year as freshman. A lot of times you're going to get the good advice that no, don't go pro just yet. Wait, know, get to know yourself, um, strengthen your, your uh, what is it? Strengthen your athletic abilities, uh, get your education. The pro, the league will be there, right? You need to look at that. In regard, you need to take that same analogy and turn it into sex. If this is a relationship meant to be in your life, this is a connection meant to cultivate, then sex is going to be there. You don't need to rush into it. And if sex is a determining factor in regards to why you should be with someone, then we have a bigger issue. This That's a whole nother video. For you okay but wait as long as you see fit to have sex with said individual if you are a plc girl if you're looking for fun and friendships hell that you can do it whenever you want to five minutes of knowing the person whatever it's your life but if you are a plc girl wait as long as you see fit you want to get to know this person you want to strengthen you want to strengthen the uh the relationship 
the you want to cultivate a relationship just like the analogy of going pro and and being in university you want to uh strengthen your athletic abilities you want to get more education about your guy before you go you go pro you know sex pro basically so just wait as long as you see fit but this is strictly opinion i don't feel like you should be having sex with the person the first night the first week give it some time okay so you can get to know this person and if this person is real about you and the intent of pursuing a long-term commitment then they're, they're they're willing to wait too they're willing to wait too because they want to know what you're about you could be batshit crazy okay so a lot of guys want to wait because they, especially if they want something real, they don't know. They don't want to have sex with you that fast. And then now you've caught feelings and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, that's a side note. Wait as long as you see fit. Okay. So you, so you ask the person, are you, you, and you want to determine if they're FF or PLC. If you get these types, uh, type of answers, then you know that they're FF and they're going to waste your damn time. If you are PLC, if you FF too, then by means jump into it. Um, if you're PLC, now you need to go into screening, okay? All right, so this person, um, if they're PLC, excuse me, if you if you find out that this person is PLC, they may have some, some of the same uh, or similar uh, responses to the questions of, you know, their intentions for dating. Like, yeah, I'm looking to, you know, uh, have a, a lasting relationship or meet someone of substance and see and... Um, you know, I'm open to commitment. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm really not dating that much. Or uh, I have people that I see, but there's nothing serious. And I would like something serious. If you're getting answers like that, then you know that they're PLC. So now you need to go into screening. Because anybody can say those those things, right? And get you all hot and bothered and say, oh, I think I found Mr. Right. Slow down. Slow down, Bessie. Um... Now you need to go into screening. And this is why you wait for sex too. All right. So they say that they're, they're, they're PLC. They're pursuing a long-term commitment also. You need to check their communication. You know, um, most men, real men, not boys, not, you know, grown men who just wear men's clothing. Men, 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 men who have, have, um, a level of success in their own life now success is defined by is relative to the person so you know everybody success level is different but whatever you define success is um, they have a, a level of success in their life they um, they can take care of themselves that's what real men are you know I we can debate that all day I'm ready real men can take care of themselves um, uh, real men are um, are clear they're mature they're consistent because or, or plc men are anyhow because they know what they're pursuing they know the end game just as in university you're going to be consistently doing your work turning it in getting better grades or getting good grades you're going to be clear in your communication with your professor or study groups you're going to act in some level of maturity because you know what you're after right secondly you need to screen their actions, okay? Um, are they trying to spend time with you? Are they inquisitive about you and what it is you want in your life, what it, where you see yourself? Are they inquisitive about what you do? Do you have any hobbies? Do they want to know you, learn you? Is there anything about you to learn? That's a whole nother video. I'll make that for you guys because a lot of you, don't have any hobbies in your life. Your hobby is running after some man. That should not be the focus of your life. If it is, it makes you less attractive. It makes you less attractive to anybody. It makes you less attractive to your friend group. Your friends probably behind your back say, all she does is run after this man or that man or it's always so, oh, some new man. Get a hobby occupy your time occupy your mind there's a saying an idle mind is the devil's playground so be occupying yourself 
live life, get out there. Uh, so anyway, that's another, that's another video. But anyway, is this person inquisitive? Are they willing to meet others in your life? Are they willing to meet, you know, your friends, family? Are they willing to invest? Okay. Also, you need to look at their character. This is why you wait. This is why you wait for sex because this is going to take some time. The screening process takes a little bit of time, right? And, and, and back to communication. When you communicate with this person, if you if you text this person or you call or however you communicate and you say, hey, there's a comedy show on Friday. You may be contacting them on Monday and you say, um, I, you know, do you want to go? Uh, I can get the tickets or whatever, however that you work it out or you let them know there's a comedy show you want to go to. Do they communicate with you on Monday? Preferably within a matter of an hour or two? Or are they communicating with you, getting back to you Thursday, Thursday night to say, okay, yeah, maybe I can hang out with you on Friday at the at the comedy show? It, that's a red flag. Okay, I, I contact you on Monday, sir. And now you contact me Thursday night. We don't even need to have a long, drawn-out conversation of how this is wrong. I'm just going to say, you know what? Thank you for getting back to me. Uh, but I already made plans. We're going to move on from there. Now either he's going to contact you and he's going to turn, he's, he's going to do a complete 180 and start putting in more effort. Or he's, he's going to keep it where it is and you'll never hear from him again. But back to the Ace of Swords. That's fine because you stated your claim in the, in the beginning. You're looking to pursue long-term commitment. And if this person can't even keep up with communication in the, in the screening process, then you know they were really an FF boy. That's what they were. And and. You're weeding them out. You don't get too hung up on that. Don't start chasing after them. Don't, I would, I would give the advice of if I communicate with you Monday and you get back to me on a Thursday night, then you're not that interest, interested. And I can't, um, I'm not in the process of, of, um, being a, a peacock and trying to make myself, uh, uh attractive and, and, and aware to you. I don't have time for that. If you if you are um, attracted, if you're interested, if you're pursuing a long term commitment, then communication will be just like I communicate with you. If you text me or call me, I will uh, make sure I'm back to you within the hour or the hours, two hours tops. Nobody in this day and time is not looking at their phone, even when they're on the job, unless they do some very structured work, construction work. Or something of that nature where they are operating heavy machinery or maybe they're in a really strict environment where you can't have your any uh, media devices you know who you're dealing with that's very specific but in this day and time nobody is not looking at their phone from Monday to Thursday get the hell out of here and that's okay because you just weeded yourself out great thank you sir so that's what you say to that secondly uh, well, thirdly, because we went over actions, make sure they want to spend time with you. Make sure that they, they're they asking questions about you. They're willing to meet others in your life. Uh, you also want that mirror or you want, excuse me, you want that window in from others. A lot of you women, you like to hide these relationships that you're in. You don't tell anybody about them. You don't want anybody in your life to meet this guy. You know why you don't want anybody to meet him? Either because you know he ain't shit, number one, or number two, you ain't got shit. You got ain't shit people around you. So they wouldn't even tell you that he ain't shit, even if he is ain't shit. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? You have people around you that that would that don't even care about you, so they're not gonna give you good advice about him. Um or, or firstly, you know this person is wasting your damn time um, and you still are trying to be around them. So you don't bring them around anybody that you like or, or that knows you well because they would tell you. They would pull you to your side. They say, friend or sister or brother, this person ain't shit. What are you doing? So, granted, uh, that, that was a side note too. Take these people around others. 
and, and make sure that they're willing to meet others. That That is a true measure of uh, someone want, wanting to pursue you in some type of long-term commitment. Number three, character. So character is... Um, it's historical reference of a person's uh, personality traits, right? So, so you need to. So, this is another reason why you need to wait. You need to screen them. You need to look at. You need to ask questions about past relationships. What was the time frame on past relationships? Um, have they ever been in a long-term relationship? You want to ask the questions of why and how. Why? Why did the relationship end? Who ended it? How did it end? Are you still good friends? Are you arch enemies? What happened? Because this is going to give you historical reference of this person's personality traits, right? Of how they operate. Um, you also, uh, like, okay, for example, if this person says, well, you know, most of my relationships, quote unquote, only last three to four months, then that tells you that this person is not even serious about cultivating anything real or they can't or there's an inability to so then you need to go into your your uh store your brain and say okay maybe this there's something funny or funky here uh, i'll try to figure this out but if this person can't even have a long a relationship longer than three to four months it might be the issue might lie with this person okay that's the same the analogy of a person who job hops, you know, they're at one job, three months, another job, two months, one job, one month, another job, five months. Um, they're, they're all over the place. That says that this person has no direction. They don't, they, they're not loyal. They're not willing to put the time in. They, they're not PLC. They may have said that they were PLC to you, but they're not. Okay. So you, you have to. You have to be analyzing. You have to analyze his life. If he has children, how are, how is he with his children? Does he have a relationship with his children? This is a big pet peeve of mine. Women that get with men who don't take care of their children, don't see their children, don't care for their children, don't... Hell, some of them don't even know the children's name. Um, that's a big red flag. That's a big indicator Okay, that's a bit that's very indicative of a narcissist, of someone who has maybe even some underlying mental issues. This is a that's a big red flag when you don't care for your offspring. Okay. You can't get don't get with this man expecting PLC. Please expect fun and friendship. Right, and you sorry, might even want to throw in yeah. money there. Anyway, now Not that he's gonna give you money. No, so you will probably end up giving him money. Okay, so this, now there's a very you're looking big at the specific this person of who there's he something is. wrong. Right. So once again, with care, you're going to determine if this is worth you're trying investment. to get to know him by way of what's the, the ROI on this? Character. Are you going to get a okay. return? So you want to know his um, character? Of investing so in him, all of that screening, time, energy, love, emotion, maybe even some uh, money. Money could be we're going to take a trip together. You pay half, or he pays half, or just dating all together you know um are you are you willing to invest in this person should you be investing in this person you need to ask yourself will this or can this turn into the ten of pentacles will this relationship eventually give me the ten of pentacles a long-term commitment you're going to know that by way of having screened this person okay and then you know big 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 deal here guys Especially for the women. Do not get with these guys. Do not get with the FF guy. The fun and friendships guy. And think that you can change his mind. Or think that you'll change his mind. He stated who he was in the beginning. He didn't, he didn't necessarily say, oh, I'm a friend and friendship guy. But he let you know by way of his, by how he answered cert certain questions when you asked questions this is my another big pet peeve of mine when i get people on the phone when we're going over dating situations when we're going over relationships i'm always asking well did you ask him no well did you ask him this no please start asking questions ladies this is 2020 basically do not be afraid to ask questions 
Don't be afraid that this person's not going to want to talk to you anymore. Or he's going to look at you as clingy or, or wanting a relationship. Well, ain't that what you want? Okay, then. And if he's not willing to give it or at least be on the way to giving it, get him out of your life. You have to firstly be the ace of swords with yourself. Be clear and concise with yourself. All right. But anyway, do not get with the fun and friendship guy and think that you will change his mind. Okay. Because let me tell you what's going to happen with the fun and friendship guy. First of all, it's a devil choice. The devil. When, what does the devil tell us? It says, your life is changing either for the good or for the bad, depending on the choice that you make. Make sure you do not choose or make a choice that will lead you to a dead end or filling in trap, closed in a situation. Okay? With the FF guy, if you're a PLC girl, you're going to be in a dead end with this person. They're not going to give you what you want. It's not going to turn out in your favor. It's a devil choice. Make sure you know that. The devil doesn't just jump on you. You don't walk down the street and then the devil energy jumps on you. No, it's a choice. So do not get with the FF guy and think that you can change his mind. Look, you say, yes, I can. I can change his mind. Let me tell you how you can change his mind. It's going to take years. He's going to fuck the shit out of you for years and y'all going to have that type of relationship. And then eventually one day he'll wake up and say, you know what? I do like her. I might even love her, but it's been years of chasing this guy. Do you want that? If you want that, if you're signing up for that, go right ahead. The FF guy has stated his claim in the beginning. Do not get with this guy thinking that. You'll be able to change his mind within a matter of months. It could take years for somebody to wake up to your value because you devalued yourself by allowing them to play with you, to have fun and friendship with you when you know you wanted PLC. And they're not stupid. They know what they're doing. They know that you devalue yourself. So, yeah, go right ahead. For those women out there up for the challenge, because, hell, this is a challenge. And I'm not talking at you. I'm talking with you. So, I've been here. Don't choose the FF guy and think, oh, I'm going to change his mind. Yeah, years later you will.